Welcome to a new tutorial series on this channel where I will teach you video editing as quickly and simply as possible. In this series I'll be using a software called Premiere Pro that many of you have probably heard of before. Today we'll start off with video editing basics, how to edit your first video in Premiere Pro. Or maybe it's not your first video and you've messed around with editing a little bit, I don't know, maybe you're professional and in that case, I think you're lost. That's enough of the intro, let's get started. Firstly, create your project and give it a name. Choose location where you want it to be saved and leave the rest at default. Let's start by importing files into a project and organizing them. Find out where your project panel is located. Mine is right here. Yours can be in a different location since you can reorganize these panels by dragging and moving them to your likings. To import media, double click inside this panel or drag and drop your footage inside of here. After importing, you can left click on a file to rename it. To change the color or label, right click and go to labels where you can select the color. It's a nice way to separate a different type of your footage. For example, my drone footage is usually violet and my camera footage is the color iris. That's enough with the media import, let's get over to creating a sequence and editing. Sequence is your video timeline, that's where you make your video. One single video is edited on one single sequence. You can have multiple sequences if you're editing multiple videos at the same time or if you're nesting clips, but that's for another video. To create a sequence, right click inside your project panel, go to new items and select sequence. There's a bunch of presets that you can use, but we will make our own by going to the settings tab up here. Select custom for editing mode, time base is your frames per second. I almost always pick 24 frames per second because all my footage from camera and drone are in 60 frames per second. That means I can slow it down by 50% for that cinematic slow motion without losing any quality. Frame size for a 1080p video is 1920 by 1080. If you're making a 4K video, you need to change it to 3840 by 2160. Pixel aspect ratio, square pixels, and no fields. Name your sequence and leave the rest at default. Now we have successfully created our sequence where you can start editing our video. Now I wouldn't recommend you to just drag and drop your clips into the timeline like this. Instead double click on your clip and a source window will show up. This is just a preview of your original clip. In most cases you probably don't want to use the whole clip. So select where you want your clip to begin and click on this button or I on your keyboard. Then go to where you want it to end and click this button or O on your keyboard. After click on it and drag it inside your timeline. There are a couple of tools when editing on the timeline. The most used ones are Selection Tool, Razor Tool and Track Select Forward Tool. The first one is just your cursor for moving your clips around. Second is for cutting up your clips and the last one is for moving multiple clips at once. Let's cut up this clip to give it a flickering effect. By cutting small pieces out of it like this, we are creating empty spaces in between which gives it this flickering effect when we play it back. One thing I should have mentioned is that the top half of the timeline is where your video clips will go and the bottom half is where audio clips will go. So that you can stack multiple clips on top of each other. To make more tracks, just right click right here and select add track. A couple more things you can do on your editing timeline is right click a clip to bring up more options. What I use the most here is speed slash duration option to speed the clip up or slow it down and audio gain to adjust the volume of your clip. The last panel I'm going to show you is the effects control panel. Quick note, if you can find some panels, just go to window and select what panel you want to see. Effect control panel shows you all the effects of your clip. So if you applied any effects from the effects panel right here, you will find the settings for it under effects control panel. So quickly, I'll show you the basic effects of all the clips. We have motion to move the clip around on X and Y axis, scale to zoom in and out of the clip, opacity to change the transparency of the clip, and if your clip has audio, the level effects under audio is the same as audio gain when we right clicked on the timeline. The difference here is that you can keyframe it. Keyframing or keying is changing settings over a period of time. Let me show you a couple of easy ways to use it. You can do a zoom in with keyframing the scale. Create a keyframe at the start by clicking on the stopwatch and select at what percentage you want the scale to start. Go forward in time and increase it. 
This will automatically create a new keyframe. To reset it all, hit this button. Another example is let's say I want to fade from black at the start of my clip. Then I go to the start, create a keyframe for opacity at 0, go forward and type 100. And it will go from 0 to 100 over a period of time. Ta-da! And now I've shown you probably like 80% of how a video is made. These simple tools are what is mostly used to create any type of video. The next thing is to use your imagination to combine the clips into an interesting video. That's the difficult part. If you want more tutorials like this, consider subscribing. If you have any requests, just leave a comment and I will read it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next one. Bye! Add it up, add it up.